Yeah, I think we've been very good in patches. I think we've shown that, first of all, how we are going to play. Our philosophy of wanting the ball, keeping the ball is very important to me. And breaking down that from day one in pre-season was a, a important factor for me to make him to understand that this is the way we are going to play. There's areas that we need to, need to improve on within each phase of play. Um, also the, the environment, the culture that they have created. You know, I've been the leader of that, but it's dictated by them and how you come to work with a smile on your face, first of all, and how you be a good person. If you're a good person, you're a good teammate. If you're a good teammate, then the team becomes stronger as a collective. Um, we've been very good at that, which shows in the performances we've had when we go behind, there's no disappointment, there's no sulking. We just get on with it and we've looked strong towards the end of games. But there are areas of our game where we need to improve. Obviously, the final third has, uh, has been okay. You know, we've missed numerous chances, we've missed numerous opportunities, uh, and that's an area moving forward that we need to focus on. One of the best bits of advice I ever got given was from the former Welsh manager, John Toshak, who managed Liverpool and Real Madrid. And I remember him saying, football coaching is like being in, going to bed. You know, you jump into bed and you pull your quilt up over your body, but your head's cold. Uh, if your head's cold, you want to pull your quilt over your head, but then your feet get cold. And it's like attacking and defending. And when he said it back many, many years ago, I, the boys laughed and I laughed. But as you go into coaching, you realise that that's what it is about. You know, you can attack all you want, but attacking starts from the back and defending starts from the front. You know, the best teams in the world are, have solid foundations at the back. You know, so it's important when you come in, you've got to build a team. You've got to decide how you want to build that team. Everyone talks, every new coach that goes into their first job talks about attacking, exciting, open, free-flowing football. But the reality is that doesn't really happen. You have to put foundations in place, building blocks in place, and build stage by stage. I've done that. I've focused on our, our structure and our framework at the start of it, of how we want to play with the ball in certain areas in, in the, the initial build phase, then the construction phase, going on to the development phase, creation phase. And I've done that. You know, so we've been very, very good in the first two thirds of the pitch. You know, now becomes the, the money ball question of you have to be better in the final third. And that takes work, that takes practice, that takes coaching, that takes movement, that takes personnel as well. So uh, we've been very good at certain things. Uh, we've not scored as many goals as I'd like. We've been very, very good defensively. But even the goals that we've conceded, I've been really disappointed with. So, uh, but I'm a stickler. Excellent. Daniel's been a breath of fresh air, really. I think, you know, Sometimes you get caught up by coaches uh, who say that they need experience, and, and sometimes you do. But the only way players gain experience is by throwing them in. You know, I'd done my research with Davide. Obviously, he was here, the goalkeeping coach, and, and Davide was very high on uh, the talents that Daniel has, uh, the attributes he has, and he's gone into detail of his footwork, his positioning, his starting positions, his end positions, things like that, his communication but he'd only played a minimal amount of games. So you don't know based upon his body of work. What you do know is you're backing your judgment and your belief as a coach. And Davide had his, a good eye on him. Obviously, I watched him. I'm not a goalkeeper or expert, so I can't take the credit for that one. I'll give that to Davide. But as soon as Davide was very confident and calm with it, uh, what I watched in the brief stuff I do know about goalies, I was very confident in, in Davide and we took the plunge and we took him to give him a chance. And again, players need chances sometimes and I think Daniel's grabbed that chance fantastically well. I think he's been very, very good and very strong and I think you see him growing every day and, and every game that he plays. Well, Ziggy's everything you want as a, as a coach. He, he trains properly. He wants to win in every aspect of training, whether it's a, a relay race, whether it's a possession orientated game, whether it's a eight small sided game, whether it's 11 v 11, he tries to referee the games as well, which is important I tell you, because he's not the referee, but he tries to influence, but he defends, he, he loves defending. You know, sometimes people get caught up, supporters get caught up in goals, you know, fantastic goals, but as a coach, you understand the, the details of defending and that is putting your body on the line, willing to block, willing to run, willing to challenge, put your head in where it hurts. Ziggy epitomizes that. I think he defends properly. All our defenders have done that this year, which has been very important because you need to be hard to play against and hard to break down. Yeah, exceptionally well again. A uh, very calm, calm person, a, a very mild mannered, but a te absolute technician on the ball. You can see right or left foot, he sees pictures, he sees things that people can't see. Uh, his range of passing is exceptional, the way he understands the game, reads the game, dictates the game. I think he's been 
uh, a very, very high standard level, and I know he wants to get better. He's a very fit boy as well. As you get older in life, you sometimes some players take their foot off the gas, um, but the good players understand that you need to stay on, on top of that and keep your body ticking over, because if you want to play as long as you can, it's important you stay at a high level physically. He does that. Uh, he's in the gym doing his extra work, and he's a good guide for the younger players. We've got some really good young midfield players as well. Keanu, Jordi, that are learning off him every day. So he's been nothing short of top level. Yeah, no, both boys have done very well. Obviously, I know the, the characters themselves. Uh, I worked with Bernie in Vancouver, a terrific person, uh, wants, to, wants to get better, still at a great age, physically very strong, powerful, you know, I can help him mentally, you know, mental side of the game is very important as well. Uh, good training habits, wants to train, obviously he's got a big body, so he's got to look after his body. I think he's done very well in certain games, other games he's made huge impacts off the bench. Uh, and as an attacking player, you are judged on your performance in the final third. Sometimes as a defender, as long as you keep the back door shut, then you've really had a good game. So sometimes forwards, uh, people's view on forwards is different because you either, if you score, you have a good game, and if you don't score, you don't, you don't have a good game. I don't look at it that, I, I value players and what they do to the team, what they bring to the team. Uh, Bernie's brought a lot to the team, not just with the ball, but without the ball. Um, so he's had a very solid, good start. Jimmy's a different type of player. Jimmy can play in, in the midfield area as a deeper one if he wants, because he likes playing short, quick passes. He can play as a 10, as a creative player, or he can play a wide player tucking in. And, and you know, he gets his goal. He probably should have scored two or three more goals. He's picked up a slight niggle, uh, but he's shown his professionalism. He's got his head down, got back, and he wants to get back on the pitch. And he's a big character as well, which certainly helps. Well, I think probably words probably don't do Duke justice in relation to you know him better than me. You know, the, the people, the supporters here have known him longer than I have. And everything I've heard, everything I've read, everything I've seen is exactly what I've seen in the first couple of days of training. He's infectious to have around the place. The players love him. The staff loves him. Obviously, I know the supporters love him. Uh, he's got goals for a reason. He's always active. He always wants to be in the box. He works his tail off. And I say this. Uh, uh, the way you work and the way you defend and the effort you put in is a mentality thing and it's a behavior. If you've got that behavior in your makeup as a player and you want to work and you want to run and you want to win, you know, that's half the job. You know, the quality then comes out. I've seen so many talented players that don't want to work. Unfortunately, they fall by the wayside. Mitch is a, a very talented player. He's got attributes that you want in a center forward but he's willing to put the work in as well. And having the infectious nature of him and the players loving him and working off him, obviously he's a big asset and a big addition to the football club again.